Academic, 5.8 notes. All right, so, um, yeah. Um, this next section, in my opinion, is super uh, straightforward. It just tests your factoring skills a little bit, okay? So if you know how to factor, this is going to be a joke. All right, so um, first step here. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve polynomial equations by factoring, right? So first step is get everything on one side equal to 0. A little side note, make sure lead coefficient is positive. And I'll show you more what I mean by that. Okay, so let me zoom on that for anyone who's going to watch this on YouTube. Make sure the lead coefficient is positive. Okay, pause it right here if you need to. Okay. All right. Um, and then what you do, second step, is you factor completely. Third step, set each factor equal to zero and solve. Those are your solutions. Those are your three steps. Okay, so if anyone's watching this on YouTube, I'll let, make sure zoom in on it. Pause if you need to, write down these steps. Lighting. Yeah, it should be. Okay, so write down these steps. Are we feeling okay about that? So I'll show you what I mean then. Kids love instructions. Okay, um, so for this one, okay, first step is what? Yeah, I want to get everything on one side such that it's all equal to zero, and my lead coefficient is positive, which I have here, so step one's already done for us. What was step two? Step two was what? Factor. factor. Okay, so let's factor this, okay? Any GCFs? No, no GCFs, okay? So we can set up our parentheses. Remember, we still have equal zero here. Put an X in the front, set up your shell. What are my signs? They're both what? Negative, both negative. And then think same sum, right? So what do I put in the spaces there? What do I put in the spaces? Six and five, yeah. Right, I wanted two factors of 30 that add up to 11. Okay, so six times five equals 30. Six plus five equals 11. Okay, same sum, same sum. Different difference, okay? Um, so if you want to, you can for that to check, but um, we're done. And then um, anyone know what my last step is to solving? So uh, I'll do this one. I'll highlight this one in orange. I'll highlight this other one in blue. Okay. So I set in orange. I set x e minus six equals zero. I add six to both sides. And x equals six is one of my solutions. Okay. For this blue one, I set the blue factor equal to zero. X minus five equals zero. Add five to both sides. Get x equals five. Okay. Are you feel okay about that? So th those are both my solutions, okay? Uh, if you look at this, right, um, the reason this works, right, if I plug, so we want everything on the left to be zero, right? Everything on the left to be zero. A number times zero equals what? Equals zero, right? So if I plug in a six for x, I'll get six minus six times six minus five, which becomes zero times one, which is zero, right? Or if I plug in five for x, I get five minus six, times 5 minus 5, which is negative 1 times 0, which equals 0, okay? That's why that works. A little bit of conceptual insight, okay? B for B. Can I move on to B now? Okay, I'm going to move on to B. Uh, is step 1 done for us? What's step 1? Get everything on one side equal to 0, such that my lead coefficient is positive. Did, I, have I, did they already do that for us? Yes, they did. Okay, so now what do I do? It's got a factor. It's got a factor. Okay. 
Let me factor this guy out, okay? Um, so is there a GCF here? No GCF. We have a 6 here. We notice there's not a, a non-1 lead coefficient, so draw a sad face. Write out the factors of 6. 6 times 1, 2 times 3, okay? Over here, this is 6 times 1, 2 times 3, okay? Set up our shell, our little, our little factoring shell. It's all equals zero still. Okay, leave some space. Uh, what are my signs going to be? Both positive. Both positive. Okay. It's, okay. I want two orange numbers in the orange space. Two blue numbers in the blue space. Good stuff. Okay. My signs are the same, right? My two signs are the same in both pairs of parentheses. Think same sum. So when I multiply my outer numbers, I multiply my inner numbers. I add those two products up. I want the, their sum to be my magic 13 here in the middle, right? I want it to be 13. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. Let me flip around the right side. So it's 6 times 1 and 3 times 2. We're going to do 1 times 2. Uh, that gives me 12, right? Oh, here we go. This works. Okay, so outer, the product of the outer numbers here, 2 times 2 is 4. Product of the inner numbers. Product of the inner numbers, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? Plus 9 plus 4 gives me 13. Okay? So let me put the orange numbers in. Okay, so I can put a 2 in the front. I need to make sure the 2 gets multiplied on the outside with my 2 here so that that 2 is going to go down here. Make it a little darker. Okay, that 3 is going to go here, and then that other orange 3 goes here. Okay? So I have it factored all the way, but unlike in my factoring homework, I'm not done, right? When we did factoring, we were done at this point. What else do I need to do now? Set both of them equal to zero, okay? So I'm going to do 2x plus 3 equals zero, and I'm going to solve for x, okay? All right, so let's solve for x. We set that second, second side equal to zero and solve. I right. should have learned how to solve for x by now, so. There we go, that's my answer. All right, so negative two thirds and negative three halves. You see how I did that? It's very straightforward. If you know how to factor, you know how to do these problems. Yes. 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 It's very straightforward. If you know how to factor, you just set that there's just one little step. Yes, set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. Okay? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Okay, so D, or there's a C here, so let's do C. Put the least on this. All right, what do I need to do? Can I just factor right off the bat? No. I've got everything on both sides, okay? So I'll subtract x squared and I'll subtract 3x, right? Why do I not want to do that? What happens if I do? I get 0 equals negative x squared minus 3x plus 70. Why do I not want to do that? I have a negative in front of my x squared. It's going to make it so hard to factor. It's going to make it almost impossible to factor. So instead, I'm just going to subtract my 70 over to the left side, okay? So I get x squared plus 3x minus 70 equals 0. There you go. There you go. Okay, so we did the first step. Second step is what? Factor, yeah. If, uh, these are pretty easy if the lead coefficient is 1, okay? Okay. And then my 
My last step is what? Set each factor equal to zero and solve. Good stuff, okay? So those are my two solutions. Um, just like when we were solving equations in Algebra 1, to check our work, we can always just take our two solutions here. We can always take our two solutions and plug them back in to check. Okay, do you guys remember how to plug your answer for x back in to check that it was right? Right, now it's for one. We did that. No comment. Okay, cool. Take that as a yes. All right. Um, let's move on to D here. Move on to D. Move on to D. Okay. Um, what do I do first? All right, Ian Bonnekees. What do I do first for this one? It's my first step. Look at your notes. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. Well, look at your notes. Did you write down the notes? Uh, I wrote down a little. All right. What does the board say? Step one. Uh, Do I have a so-and-so? No, you can just, just read off the board. All right. Uh, yeah, get everything on one side equal to zero. Um, there you go. So over here, how do we get everything equal to zero? Uh, move the four over. There you go. Good job. Yes, yeah, subtract four. Good. Good. Okay. So we have x times three x plus four minus four equals zero. Okay. Um, you guys are gonna like this, but uh, you gotta distribute the x. Okay. You gotta distribute the x. Okay. So three x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 0, okay? So you have to get it in what's called standard form, okay? You can't, you got it. You want to have your equation factored completely. You want to have it factored completely. So to do that, um, you got to get this minus 4 in on the factoring business. So you've got to distribute this x out and then refactor so that everything's included in the factoring. Okay, so... So are you guys okay with what we did here? We just made we just we subtracted everything over to one side, then distributed everything out. Okay, so we don't have any parentheses left. Now we can factor. Okay, are we okay with that? Okay, so we, we need it in this form specifically before we factor. Okay, you need it as a trinomial. Okay, you guys see that? Okay. Okay. Um, any GCFs and a solve? No. No, no GCFs. So what do I do? Yeah, so check for GCF, do the parentheses thing. Before I do the parentheses thing here, I have to do what? Because of my three. Well, you have to find the thing that equals four with the this part. Uh, do you mean like write the factors of three and yeah. four down? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then Anna said I should set up my parentheses. What are my signs, Anna? Positive and negative. Good job. I have 5% battery remaining. I think I had 2%. I'll plug in. Good job. Good job. Okay. Good stuff. All right. And then Anna, um, so I'm going to put two of those orange numbers in the front, two of the blue numbers in the back. Um, Anna, which pair do I want here and why? You're good. Take your time. Yeah, she needs one second because the trial and check method takes time. All right. Or are you just stuck, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Anna, let's look at the signs in our parentheses. Are they the same or are they different? They're the different, right? We think different, different, right? Different, different, okay? So we want, we want to pick a pair from either each side such that when we multiply the outer numbers together and the inner numbers together, the difference of those two numbers is four, that number in the middle, okay? What number here is gonna give us that? What pair here is gonna give us? When we multiply the outer together, minus multiplying the inner together to give us four. Uh, three times one times two times six. Good job, yep, crushed it. Yep, good job. Mm -hmm. Yep, so then Anna, the products of the 
outer numbers was 6. The product of the inner numbers is 2. Okay. Now let's think about this, Anna. Do I want that 6 to be positive or that 2 to be positive? You want the 6 to be positive. Good job, yep. And I want the 2. The 2 should be negative, okay? So this is so I can figure out where to put the blue numbers and where to put the orange numbers, okay? So where do I, oh, I guess they're both 2s, okay? They're both 2s. So they're both 2s, so we can just write those in. And then Anna, where should I put that orange three in? How do I know? So if I put the orange three here, I'm gonna let Anna answer this. If I put the three at the front. When I go to foil back out and I multiply it with this negative two here, I'm gonna get a negative six, but I want a positive six, don't I? Yes. So I need to put that three, the orange three in the other spot. Does that make sense? So we're factored, we're factored. Okay, we're factored, good job, Anna. Um, what's my last step? Two, seven equals zero. Seven equals zero, yeah. So what are my two solutions then? So if x plus two equals zero, that gives me x equals negative two. And I have three x minus two equals zero, that gives me what? That's it, I'm done, I'm finished. Okay, we feeling okay about that? No? I still just don't get how you know like which numbers go in front of like the X and like the front of the X. Okay. Like I get like the like front, like outside and inside numbers, but I just like, don't get like where you know. Okay, yeah, so you know I put the orange in the orange spaces and the blue in the blue spaces. Do you know that much? Yeah. Okay, you just don't know why I put the three here instead of here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all about, and that's a really good point, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest part of these factoring problems. Um, so what I want you guys to do is I do want you to write, I want you to like connect to the outer numbers and write their product, connect the inner numbers, write their product. You can do that? Okay. Okay, so this four right here, this four right here, I want it to be a positive four. I need a plus four in the middle, okay? So, right, different, our signs were different. So I want the difference, not the sum, I want the difference of six and two to be positive four, okay? To get that to happen, I need the six to be a positive six, I need the two to be a negative two. Are you following that? To get that, so to get there to be a plus four left over, what's gonna happen when I foil this back out, I need to get my original problem back, okay? This four, this plus four x is going to come from multiplying my outer and my inner together and combining like terms. So when I combine like terms, I need this six and this, I'm going to have a plus six x and a minus two x. That'll combine to give me a plus four x that I need to get back, okay? Um, so I need to, when I multiply the outer numbers together, those need to give me a plus six. They need to give me a plus, a positive, okay? When I multiply, I'm going to multiply three and two together. They need to give me a positive. Okay, so what I do here, that number I multiply three with, that's two. So the two needs to go next to the plus sign. Okay, and then I need to put the three wherever. If I put the three here, the three and the two are never going to get multiplied together, right? Because that we don't, when we FOIA, we don't multiply the numbers inside the parentheses with each other. So that two, three has to go over here. So when I do the inner step, that three gets multiplied with the two. I don't know if that helps at all. Okay, and then after that, it's just process of elimination. You just only have one spot to put everything. Okay, so short answer to your question is I need to have a plus four left over. So I need to have right negative two, or, um, negative six plus two giving me negative four. I need plus six minus two to give me plot positive four. So I put um, I put the three and the two in the spot that's going to give me plus two times three. Okay. I want to have plus two times three in the middle here. Okay, if I put them on the outside, you could like flip the signs. You could flip the signs. That'll work too. Um, yeah. So I think it's easy to see. You know, the three needs to get multiplied with the two, and the one needs to get multiplied with this inside two, right? I'd say like when you foil out your if, like I told you guys to always foil to check these because they're hard. If 
you foil a check and it doesn't work, I'd say try, try, try switching the signs around. That might give you the right answer. So change this to a minus, change that to a plus. That might give you the right answer. Does that, make, does that answer your question? OK. Um, yeah, so I'll, I think I've said too much. Might move on. Okay. Um, e, E, uh, Mason, what do I do first? Well, the first thing that you do is try to get both sides equal to zero, or one side equal to zero. Yeah, yeah. So how do I do that? Wouldn't you subtract the x squared and the 5x? Yeah, I can subtract those over. So that gives me x times x minus 8 minus x squared minus 5x equals 0. Good. What do I do? want to do now, Mason? And then now you need to distribute the x. Um, and then what happens? So what do you combine like terms? Yeah, I combine like terms. So I get negative 13x equals 0, the x squared. Good. And then um, how do I factor this? I don't. I don't have to. What's the answer? Wouldn't it just be oh. zero? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, zero. So I look up my negative thirteen. I get x equals zero over negative thirteen, which equals zero. So sometimes you'll you'll multiply everything out and get everything on one side. You'll find that it's not even like uh, not even. Um, what am I trying to say? It's not even a, a factual problem. Okay, F, F. Fraction time. Woo! Okay. Um, how do I get rid of the fractions? How do I get rid of the fractions? We hate fractions, right? So what I want to do here for this one is I want there to, I want to get a common denominator. I want there to be a common denominator, okay? I want a common denominator. Okay, what's my common denominator going to be? 56, yeah? So how do I get 1 8? How do I change the denominator of 1 8 to 56? Multiply the top and bottom by 7, yep. How do I get this x over 7 here? How do I get the denominator on this one to be 56? Multiply the top and bottom by what? By 8, yep. So when I do that, I get x squared over 56 plus 7 over uh, 56 equals 8x over 56. And then at this point, how do I get rid of my denominator? So technically I multiply both sides by 56. You can also just think to yourself, at this point they just go away. So once all the denominators are the same, just ignore it, just to get rid of it. Just let it disappear. Once all the denominators are the same, the denominator just disappears, it becomes this equation, okay? Now I have something familiar to work with, don't I? So what do I want to do, Quinn Hunt? Uh, subtract 8x. Subtract 8x from both sides. 8x, 8x squared minus 8x plus 7 equals 0. And then what's the x squared? Good stuff. And then I factor. They're both minuses. Answer is x equals 7. My other solution is x equals 1. Okay, we feel okay about that one? That was pretty straightforward once we got rid of the uh, fraction. Going to G. So what, what's going on with G here? What's going on with G? So do we need to, do we have everything equal to zero? Do we have everything factored? Is everything factored? Yeah, it's all factored. So the first two steps are done for us. So what do I do? Just set each one equal to zero and solve. Yeah. So this is just like three little algebra one problems. solution. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you step three.
three solutions real fast. Okay, so this one has three solutions. Okay. We'll learn more about that later. Okay. Uh, H, Maggie Van Roy. What do I do first for H? Uh, get the equal zero. Yeah, what do I do? Good, then I factor that left side. So what's my GCF, Maggie? First one goes in the front, square root of the second one goes in the back. Okay, there we go. Now we're factored, right? Okay, so for these guys, you have three factors here. You have x, you have x plus 5, you have x minus 5, okay? So I'm not worried about you guys for getting to set these equal to 0, but don't forget to set this x equal to 0 as well, because that's its own factor. So your answer is x equals 0, x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 5. Okay, does that make any sense? But don't forget to set that x that's chilling over there. Don't forget to set him equal to zero, okay? I'm going to highlight him in pink. Don't want you guys to mess that one up. Okay, let's skip i and j. I don't think those are too critical. I'm going to whip through k real quick. Um, so what do I do first? Uh, let's do um, Emily Day. What do I do first? Um, you add over the 3x squared. Yeah, so add over the 3x squared, subtract over the 3 that equals 0, and then what kind of factoring problem is this, Emily? Yeah, grouping. It's a grouping, yeah? So put blue parentheses around the first two, put red parentheses around the second two. What do I need to do when I put on the red parentheses? I need to make that into a plus. Yeah, I need to make that into a plus. Okay. So let's factor the blue. I pull out an x squared. And then I add still have a minus x plus 3. Okay, what does that factor to, Emily? Am I factored completely, Emily? Yeah. What do I need to do? Mm. Yeah, so that I got a difference of squares that I have to factor. I think. Yeah. All right, guys. Put quite down. And then what are my then my three solutions? I set each of these equal to zero and solve. So there's my three solutions. Okay. Feel okay about that? We see that? So it's just factoring by grouping. Well, let's move on to the word problems. Do these three word problems real quick and then match the graphs with the functions, okay? So one number exceeds another number by six and the product of the two numbers is 72. Find the numbers, okay? So let's do x and y, x and y. I want to find x and y, okay? One number, let's just say x, exceeds another number, let's say that's y, by 6. So what's, what equation what, what equation does the stuff in pink give us? One number exceeds another number by 6. What does that mean? Yeah, x equals y plus 6. Okay. What does the stuff in orange give me? Okay, okay, okay. Good, okay. So we have a system of equations here. How do we want to solve this? We 
can't do linear combination, or uh, sorry, I was thinking, uh, we can't do elimination, sorry, can't do elimination because it's not linear. This is not a linear equation right here. So what do we do? You guys remember that unit? Substitution, yeah. So we're going to substitute x into here. So I'm going to write y plus 6 times y equals 72. Okay. And now I'm just solving this like a regular uh, factoring problem, okay? or regular uh, equation. So that becomes y squared plus 6y distributed to y, and then minus 72 from both sides. Okay. Factor real quick. Okay, I'm going to whip through these. Okay, two number, two factor 72, the difference is six. What's that? Not nine and eight, 27 and, right now, what's 72 divided by three? 24, 24, thank you. Uh, that doesn't do it. Two factor, okay, I'm just gonna write seven factor 72. Uh, one times 72, two times 36. Three times, what's that? 26. 12 and 6. 12 and 6, thank you. 12 and 6, so 12 and 6. Okay, so y equals negative 12. Um, so from this we get y equals negative 12 and y equals 6, okay? And then if we, um, y equals negative 12 and y equals 6, okay? So if we plug those in for x, to solve for x, we get x equals negative 12 plus 6, or x equals 6 plus 6, okay? So x is either 12 or negative 6. How do we know which one? So we have, we have two options for y and two options for x, right? Okay. If we pick y equals negative 12, we get um, negative 6 for x. I wonder um, if there's just two solutions here. So, so x equals negative 6 and y equals negative 12. That solves, that solves the problem. And then the other one was y equals 6 and x equals 12. That solved the problem as well. I think there's just two, two pairs of solutions. Okay, you guys see that? Okay, we move on to B. I want to get through these. A rectangle's length is 3 feet longer than its width. So length equals width plus 3. And then the area is 70. So L times width, length times width equals 70. And they want us to find the length and width. This is the same thing, guys. We take this L here, we plug it in down here. So we get W plus 3 times W equals 70. Okay. Distribute the W, subtract over the 70. So we get W squared plus 3W minus 70 equals 0. We factor. Here, we'll, we'll, okay, so... Um, we have something different here. Uh, it'll be 10 and 7, right? So our solution for W, either W equals 7 or W equals negative 10. Which one should I throw out and why? Why can't W be negative? It's a width, right? You can't have negative width. So we know W, w equals 7 is our width, and I just plug that in over here. It gives you length equals 7 plus 3. You guys feel okay about that one? I kind of went through it, sorry. Let me through all these. I'll hope they, this is on YouTube, okay? So if you need to slow it down for yourself, you can. That's gotta be on YouTube, okay? Um, one leg, hey, there's three minutes. One leg of a right triangle is 14 inches longer than the smaller leg. That pot is 16 inches longer than the smaller leg. Oh, yeah. Find the lengths of the sides of the triangle. Um, So we're doing the quiz on what day? 
Thursday. I might run through C right before the quiz. Um, three. Can I show you three? Three. Match each polynomial function with its graph. Okay. How do I do that? Find the zeros. Okay. The zeros of this one right here. That's going to be x equals two and x equals negative three, which is um, the same as this third graph here, negative three and two. This is three. Over here, the zeros here are x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 half, which is what we have right here. And this is 2. For c, c is just a process of elimination. 1. The zeros are 0, negative 2, and positive 2. Okay. 0, negative 2, positive 2. You guys feel okay about that? Kind of went through the last bit. We'll go over this uh, on right before the quiz. Thanks, everybody.